I listen to all of George Clinton's music and this is what I've learned. Point number one, live drums. There's almost a 0% chance you will see George Clinton pull up the Zeta 808 or the Lex Lucas snare in his music. George is super inspired by music in the 90s or 80s. He mentioned multiple times in his interview with Fantano that he creates music for nostalgia. Early mid 90s was his childhood and um, buying equipment in general from that time period. With the importance of nostalgia in his music, one can assume that the sounds he chooses will reflect that time period. In a lot of his music, George uses a lot of drum breaks. Here is him saying that he doesn't play live drums thankfully for us and that he probably uses 0G total recs and drum packs. Here are also a few examples I could find of him using drum breaks in his music. The first example is slow Slide. Here, he uses the drum break in James Brown's Fuck Drummer. Here is the comparison between the two songs. The next example I could find is in Living Loose, and he uses the drum break from Lynn Collins's Think About It, and here are the two side by side comparisons. I would recommend using drum breaks in your music to get a similar vibe to George. Uh, you don't even have to process the breaks that much. Here's my example. I've also linked in the description a download link for you to go download some drum breaks that I personally use I like. So go check that out. The next thing I want to talk about is nostalgia. This is arguably the more simple parts of this music because I have like three tips for you in terms of what you can do to create more nostalgia in your music. Chords. George mentions that he uses a lot of strange voicings for his chords. In this interview, he mentions actually stumbling across chord progressions whenever he makes music. He thinks that it might actually be an advantage that he doesn't know too much music theory as it forces him to sit down and kind of like play something that's nice to his ear. Simplicity is extremely key for George. His chord progressions are not very long or complex. They mostly consist only of two or three chords that repeats throughout the whole song. Living loose on, on this album, right? Dong, 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 dong. That's three chords, so fine. Okay, now I'm the chords it. are I'm kind of it. weird. Yeah. They're not They're little... DGA. I can hear it. I was saying it, it takes so long to make music. I have to accidentally find those weird chords. Uh, it's difficult because I don't know how to, I never hear anything in my head and then put it down. And in my opinion, this is the 80-20 rule for creating a more dreamy sound in your music. The next thing I want to talk about is sound selection. This is arguably probably also another important aspect in terms of George's music. George has mentioned using Zero G nostalgia and Omnisphere in his music. He has mentioned before that he thinks that buying equipment or synthesizers from that time period is the main reason why his music sounds like what it does. You don't actually have to buy a hardware synth. There are many VSTs that are also just kind of catered towards nostalgic sounds. And here are a few examples. In Living Loose, the distorted bass or pad actually comes from the Cork Prophecy. In my second example slide, the massive distorted bass pad is a Kurzweil K2000. And the last example I could find is the JV1080, which is a old sample based synthesizer. And George has mentioned he uses it a lot in the track Dumb and really throughout the whole slide album. Finally, we get to the effects part of his music. Really, you kind of just want to bubble the fuck out of it. If you have RC20, great. This is how you can do it. This is extremely simple.
However, if you don't have RC20, Ableton is awesome at doing all this shit. I have a rack in the description which use, primarily uses Ableton audio effects and just the LFO. Here's why it sounds like before and after using my rack. The last thing I want to talk about is mixing, which I think personally is the most important part of his music. After listening to both Who Rap Aya and Sly, I found a few similarities in how he mixes his music. The first thing I want to talk about is boomy mids. My biggest recommendation is really just kind of using sounds that are in the mid-range frequencies. The second thing I found with in a lot of his music is that he actually has a very tame high end. You can do this in uh, two different ways. One by using an EQ or you'll be using a multi band. I personally like using Pro MB by Fab Filter, and this is how I would go about achieving his mix. And that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's been a while since I've made a video on YouTube. I'm back. Comment down below on the next artist you want me to cover. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.